some of you uh, might know me. Uh, most of you I don't know real well. Um, some of you I've known for over 40 years. It's an honor and privilege to be here and to share with you uh, this morning. Everybody turns this thing differently, so I think it's weird. Uh, the announcements I have are for the mission partner, for the People's Church. I've been there a few times. Um, it's an interesting, it's, um, some people think of it as a native church it's not really it tends to have a lot of native people but it has a lot of street people it has a lot of destitute people people that kind of don't fit anywhere else and um, I remember one time I was there in the summer and the, the bill of pastor that used to be there used to bring his dog in and other people sometimes would and then a cat walked in and then it got real interesting and um, so they had to kick the cat out um, People have stayed there, they get meals there, they get assurance there, they get what they can't get in other places, you know. And so, uh, Bridget, Brid Brigitta, Pastor Brigitta is, is there now. Did she come and speak already? No, next week. Next week, okay. So, uh, I think that would be a really good and interesting uh, Sunday to be here for sure. So the other thing is it's, I finally, last, last year, I forgot to put on my St. Patrick's pin. Um, I kind of collect religious junk, and this is an actual Catholic St. Pat's pin. So I thought, why not talk about St. Pat for a minute in the announcements? He was born in uh, 387. You don't remember back that far, Fred, do you? I guess he's not that old. All right. <laughs> Kilpatrick, Scotland. His real name was Mal Mallory Suckant. And at 16, he was kidnapped and uh, taken into, uh, they call it human trafficking now, and he was uh, hauled off to uh, Ireland and made to work as a, uh, as a uh, shepherd uh, to tend sheep and so forth and so on, and taken away from his family. His family was quite rich. But, um, you know, wars and rumors of wars were going on and they got taken away. Um, he became very close in his faith when he was doing these jobs. And at one point, God said, you got to go back to Scotland. And so um, he walked hundreds and hundreds of miles and he just kind of walked off, left the sheep. Um, and he grew in his faith. He became, he, he never actually was a saint. That's the funny thing. According to Catholic Church, you know, I mean, he was once short of a miracle or something. I don't know what the deal was, but um, he, he talked about God speaking to him. He established 300 churches in uh, Scotland. 
and uh, became their patron saint. You know, and even though the Catholic Church says he's not a saint, they're like, you know, whatever. Why don't you come down to the pub and we'll have a pint and we'll fight about it later or whatever, however they figure those things out. So uh, patron saint of Ireland, kind of an interesting story. Um, all of the, a lot of the Catholic saints have these incredible uh, historical stories behind them. So uh, do we have any other announcements that anybody wants to stick in there? Once, twice, sold. Is my mic on? It's not? It is on? Oh, are you guys jerking me around? Now I don't know. I guess it is on, okay. At my other church they used to go, and it was on, you know, the kids would do that just to mess with me. <laughs> and so I never really knew if it was or not half the time. All right. Um, Let's get on with our worship. Please stand if you are able. In remembrance of our holy baptism, we begin today in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Have mercy on us. Oh God, God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out our wrongdoings. Wash us thoroughly from our misdeeds and cleanse us from our sins. Against you and you alone have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God. Put away your spirit with us. Cast us not away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and sustain us in a willing spirit. God, who is compassionate and forgiving through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, forgives us of all our sins, promises to never leave or forsake us, creates new and clean hearts within us through the Holy Spirit, and guides us in God's ways to eternal life. Amen. Our first hymn is Christ the Life of, of All the Living.
O God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself. And in mercy, you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We now have our text readings for today. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Psalm is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12, to read responsively. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. From my, remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. I don't know, do we have a couple kids here for, yeah. Oh, one of them was laying on the floor. I didn't see him. No, she wasn't laying on the floor. Why don't y'all come sit down here? Hi. You you don't know me. My name's Mark. Oh, you got leprechauns on earrings. Nice. I got my little thing. And your name is? Emily, you're gonna, I'm really old. You're going to have to talk loud. 
Harper, okay. Hi. Hi. Well, hi. You all look really nice. Are, are you guys nice? Most of the time? No, a couple of your sisters, right? Well, you're probably not nice to your sister all the time. You know how that goes. My sister and I used to get in fights. Now, I know one of the things they do is they give out these lollipops. So I just, I, I got a really good deal on some. Does your mom, your mom ever go to garage sales or any of that and you get good deals on stuff? Sometimes maybe, yeah. So today's, the thing in the Bible today uh, is going to talk about Jesus and how we have to not be selfish. And we have to kind of give up our own, die to our own self. So we're supposed to always help other people out, Right? Like when your mom wants you to help wash the dishes, you're not supposed to go, eh. You know, they don't like that, I guess, do they? No. So or if we had, see a friend at school who's sad or they forgot their lunch, maybe we'll share part of our lunch or whatever, that kind of thing. So I'm going to pass these out first. Um, and... I, I had more, you know, because I thought there was more of you, um, you know, but I just, I didn't know how many, I thought there could be a hundred kids here. I didn't know, you know. So, um, some of these got a little mixed up. I know they're called dum-dums. Now, just to be on the safe side, don't eat a bunch of them because they might make you dumb. I don't know. You know, they have those candies called Smarties. Yeah. I think those are okay to eat a lot of those because the, they'd probably make you smart. So just to make sure um, we didn't get the wrong colors, could you unwrap them? And we can wrap them back up, you know, just to make sure that the color, because I got these really cheap. Yeah? Is that, the, is that right? Did that have the right? Yeah. Okay, so that's purple. So that's right. And uh, I got kind of a weird one. How about yours? Are they the right? Did you check them? You might want to check the other one. What do you, what do you got there? Why, why are you giggling about that one? It's good? It's wood? Well, how, how could that happen? What do they taste like? Like wood? <laughs> well, you know, beavers like wood. You're not part beaver, are you? No. Well, this is a problem. None of you are woodpeckers, are you? All right. You feel kind of bad you got wood ones, I suppose, even though it's silly. It'll last all day. <laughs> I got a wood one, too. What can we do to help? What was your name again? Harper. Harper. What can we do to help Harper out? I'm afraid I got a wood one, too. Because she didn't get anything she can really eat. What can you guys do to fix up this mixed up mess? You want three wood ones? No, okay. I can't help you out. Can you help her out? She's looking at you. Jesus told us to share and to kind of look after other people. I, I'm out of, well, here, I got some more, okay? So I, I'll give you, I'll give you one, okay? I'll just double check, though. They're all wood! Well, but look at them. I have another one here. Would any of you like to share 
with Harper. Now she has two, and you have one. This is what Jesus taught us to do, is to give to others, even if that means you're going to have less. Good job on that. You both did a good job. Of course, I'm just joking because I do have more in here, but I got two separate bags. Good job, girls. All right. And nice meeting you. Amen. I thought they would never give those things up. <laughs> that would mess up my whole, uh, my whole deal. Our gospel acclamation. today comes out of John 12, 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was there from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, and the, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for the reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. As I have glorified it, I will glorify it again. And the crowd standing there heard it and said to one and said it was thunder. And again an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now is the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I when I am lifted up from this earth, will draw all people unto myself. And he said this to indicate the kind of death that he would die. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Uh, so Thursday, Larry was at my house helping me sort out some, I got a lot of hobbies some motorcycle parts that I got. And he said, what's your sermon about? And so I basically ended up telling him the whole thing while we were standing there. And uh, I said, well, now you know the whole thing. You don't have to come. And he, he said, no, I'll just bring my phone. I got some games. So do you have those ready? We're good to go. Excellent. OK, fine. But if, if, if I start to say something that Elsa thinks is important, she could just, you know. I like to kind of take the context of this whole uh, where this Bible verse is coming from. Jesus has entered into Jerusalem. It's the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, okay? It's, a, it's kind of like St. Patrick's Day in St. Paul. It's just a mob, and there's all kinds of things going on. It's weird that these Gentiles were there. What are they doing there? Well, there's kind of a cross of cultures going on here, because they normally wouldn't care about the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. But there's something else going on. 
Um, it would be nice if this was written sequentially, <laughs> especially the Old Testament, but it is not. So um, Palm Sunday's already happened in this set of verses. Jesus came in, and people are really aware of who he is and what's going on. And his new uh, best friend, not new, because he's known the family forever, Lazarus. People want to see this guy that was raised from the dead. That's a pretty neat deal. And a lot of people witnessed it, and they said, no, the dude was in for three days. They didn't want to open the tomb because they thought it would smell bad, you know? Not because Lazarus didn't bathe, but he'd been dead for three days. Now, the Pharisees knew what was going on, and they didn't like this one bit because they were clamoring, you know? This was a bigger deal. So they were conspiring. I always thought this was kind of funny. They were conspiring to capture and kill Jesus and Lazarus. And I always wondered what they said to themselves. Well, he's, we'll have to kill him again. You know, and the, the, what, if they, what if Jesus raises him from the dead again? What are we going to do? You know, so we have to kill Jesus first. I don't know how they figured that out. But um, they were not happy. They were saying, um, see, the world is following after them. This is kind of like when we hear this whole story, it's kind of like going to this one movie I went to where everybody who went to the movie knew the ending. It was Titanic. You know, I wanted it, when I went to the movie, I wanted to stand up and go, oh, no, the boat's going to sink. Because everybody knew the boat was going to sink, right? They didn't know what Leonardo DiCaprio and the other, that stuff. But the boat's, the boat's going to sink at the end of the movie. We know that Jesus is going to die on the cross, and then he's going to raise from the dead. We know that. But these people in the Bible, they're not privileged to that information, so it's good to kind of read it with that in mind. Um, I want to focus on one, ver uh, one verse in here. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So, like a seed, last summer I was retired and I was going to do all this stuff, you know, and one of the things I was going to do is plant all these flowers, and they've been sitting in the entryway since last, I don't know when. Really pretty pictures, but they're not flowers. They're just seeds. You know how people get seed catalogs, and they want to look at the seeds, or you go to Home Depot or whatever, and you look at the seeds there, and my mom used to like to go to Home Depot because they had a certain type of marigold there that nobody else had. And I don't remember what it was, but I had to drag her over there every year. But um, these are not realizing their potential sitting in my entryway. They're just, and some people would say, well, they're no good now. Throw them out. Are they? I don't know. I feel kind of bad that these seeds didn't get to uh, do their thing, you know. So... A seed's purpose is to make fruit, right? It will realize its purpose. And once it does that, the seed is gone. Sometimes seeds and fruit are the same thing, like acorns, right? But still, it's fruit and it's a seed. I ran into a story recently that just kind of amazed me. Um, I like old stuff, antique stuff, old junk. And, and uh, there was this... Fifteen years ago, there was this botanist. Her name was Elaine Soloway. She lived in a kibbutz, and she would, she's actually American. She's from uh, California, and she would help raise plants that were uh, ancient species to keep them from dying out, like myrrh. I don't know what myrrh looks like. Is it a bush? Is it a tree? I don't know. Frankincense and uh, all this other kind of stuff. And she heard about these seeds, and some people were saying, we ought to try and grow these. And so she asked the people that had the seeds, can we have these seeds? No. Archaeologists had dug up seeds in a place called uh, Masada. Now, Masada, I got a commemorative Masada coin that somebody gave to me. If you were Jewish, you would mo certainly know what Masada was. Um, in, in 79 AD, the Romans 
laid siege to this place. It was one of the last groups of um, Jews that were holding out in the area. And rather than be captured, 920 of them committed suicide. And so on this it says, never again, or oh that my people had hearkened unto me. And Masada shall never fall again. They found jars of dates in Masada. 2,000 year old seeds. Now I'm worrying about these because they're almost a year old, right? And people said, we should try and grow some of these. This would be cool. There were no uh, date palms left from the time of Christ. Now, right, when you think of Israel, you think of sand dunes and pyramids and, and stuff like this. And yes, if somebody's not tending to the palms, they're going to die. And with all the wars and stuff over the years, there were no palms left from the time of Christ. But these in the jars were. Of course, the archaeologists said, you're going to put these in the ground, they're going to rot, and then we're not going to have them anymore. So no, we're not giving them to you. Well, yeah, you got three jars. I mean, come on. No, 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 we're not going to do it. Three years, they went back and forth. Finally, they gave her three, uh, 30 seeds. And out of the 30, six sprouted. And out of the six, one uh, came to bear fruit, and they called it Methuselah. Then they got some other dates they found in the Dead Sea caves where they found the scrolls. And they were able to cross-pollinate. And now, if you want to buy some of these 2,000-year-old dates, you can get them in packs of three for 150 bucks or something, I think. But I couldn't find out where you do that. Can you imagine? Wanting to realize their potential for two thousand years and sitting there they found these jars under rubble of the city when they were excavating you know doing their dig type stuff does it matter when we realize our potential our full potential apparently not well the 30 dates were gone the 30 seeds were gone but in its place was a Nothing short of a miracle. So how do we die? And what's the purpose of dying? You know, you said, oh, that, that, that chocolate is to die for. Well, I don't think that's what they meant exactly. What is our purpose? Why are we created by God? To do what? A butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker? We have these jobs, right? Man, I got, oh, I just want this one job so bad, and you get it, and it's great. And then a couple years later, it's meh. You know? But a job isn't who we are. It's not who we are as people. Uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13. You guys have probably heard this before. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels and do not have love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. Okay? I think about these rich people. You know, you got, you got $50 million. Why do you keep, why do you need more? But, you know, it doesn't matter. If you're rich, if you're famous, if you're popular, if you don't have love, and this is the love of Christ. In John, it, in the Gospel of John, it talks about God. God is love. And I wish I had more love in my life. Well, where do you go? Go to the source, right? When, when we were 14, 15 years old, we thought love was, oh, I'm in love. And, and we had all these weird feelings inside, and we didn't know how to handle them. And we realize that that's not really what it's all of. This mushy feelings, you know, Valentine Day card kind of thing isn't where it's all about. It is about loving others. We are created to care, just like a seed is created to become something. So I put away my selfish desires and I love others. This sounds kind of hard. Oh, I gotta, I gotta go visit somebody and bring them soup. And 
I don't want to do these thank you cards. And I don't want to call my aunt. She's always so crabby, but yeah, I don't know. But we all know these people who are constantly giving, right? And they're happy about it. And they're just always giving and they're, they, they seem to be okay. Yeah, I had cancer two years ago and, you know, I prayed about it and, and you know, we got through it and it's okay. And we have a, generally we'll have a word for people like that. <coughs> Weirdos. Well, you're weird. Nothing seems to bother you. Why is that? That's weird. I don't get it. You know, you might say to yourself, I'm nice. I'm usually helpful. I, do, I try to do nice things to people, be a good person, but this doing, being nice to everybody all the time and being good and sharing, it's too Pollyanna for me. It's too, it's, I don't know, it's not me. It's exhausting, isn't it, to do that? And sometimes what we forget is we are created to care. One of the things I've been doing since I was uh, retired is I got to know the ceases up in uh, Bagley, the cease funeral home, and I, periodically they have people that either don't have a church, uh, don't have their pastor doesn't have uh, their church doesn't have a pastor, or they just don't go to church and they need somebody to help them with a, a funeral. And um, I don't know if you, the, the, the funeral home up there is all run by women. And they laugh at all my jokes. And so I said, I'm going to help you guys. It seemed like a nice place to help out. And so I'll do funerals. And I love, um, because of the work I've done in the past, the whole thing about people dying and being upset and crying. I've seen that a lot. And it, it, it's, it's a place that I'm familiar with. And so... Um, as I give, these people say, you know, thank you so much. We didn't know how, how we were going to do this. These people don't go to church. They have no clue what to do with the funeral. And, there's, and I walk away and I feel what? I feel lifted up. I feel like I really did something helpful. So there's all these different, I mean, you know. So make sure all of you volunteer to help with the funeral next week. That's your homework. No. Somebody see, you'd say that's the last thing that would come to my mind, literally. Um, but one of the most Christ-like people I know is Mike uh, from the other church. He's always hauling older people around and um, bringing them shopping or bringing them to church. He, um, he would always help out with uh, stuff with kids at the church. And I said, you're, you're one of the most Christ-like people I know. <laughs> what? What? Well, I know. Because he, he's a free, he doesn't like to get up in front of people and talk. He doesn't like to be, uh, you know, have anybody notice what he's doing. But he's helping all these people, older people, some younger people. He, he just does this. He didn't even think about it. It brings us joy. It brings us strength. The world has sold us a false bill of goods and think, if I could just get this really nice job, because the one I got now stinks. I don't like it. I don't like these people. My boss, I don't even want to, don't get me started. Or if my kids can just be successful and do well, then I will be happy. Or, you know what, we've been saving up and we're going to move out of this dump and we're going to buy this nice house. Finally. And, and we deserve this. And this brings us some joy. Or you get a new car and you're, until you get the first dent in it and you freak out. That's why I buy used ones, because they're pre-dented, so I don't have to worry about it. It's just like one more dent and then it's like, well, don't even notice it. Um, these are things that the world says will supposed to bring us joy, right? All these external things that kind of make me feel better about how my world is going. But Christ tells us we are created to care for others. And the world sells joy in ways and places that just don't last. Die to self and serve. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. He was trying to be an example. 
right? Let the children come to me. Get these stinky little kids out of here, the disciples said. They're bugging you. No, let them come. Well, what's the payoff? It's got to be one, right? In a couple of places in the New Testament, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit, right? Uh, we've got apple trees at our house. I've got a plum tree that is so ugly. It was ugly to begin with, and then a branch fell on it and broke it in half. Now it's like most people would cut it down, but every other year it's full of plums. It bears fruit. It doesn't matter how ugly it is. It's stuck between two bigger trees. What's the fruit we bear? Okay, here we go. The, spirit, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Maybe you just don't feel like you need more peace in your life. No, I'm, I'm pretty peaceful. Thank you. I don't, need, I don't need more love. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. These are all things that we get as a benefit, all right? The new car is going to fall apart. Your kids are going to do stupid things and say stupid things and go out with stupid people, and it'll make you upset and angry, or they'll drop out of college or, they'll, you know, whatever. This joy comes in from in here, and the benefits of, of serving are, are, are deep, and lasting. This giving grows joy and we fulfill our purpose like the flower seed grows into a rose and we grow into people that are full of joy. Amen. And now, moving on, um, our next hymn is, Lord, Let My Heart Be Good Soil. Right? All right? Yeah. As grains of wheat. Oh, as the grains of wheat. Oh, by the way, if I forget something, remember to just yell at me. As the grains of wheat. Apostles Creed is next. The Apostles Creed is next. Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I always like to kind of mention, people say, why are we praying about the Catholic Church? I mean, we're Lutheran. And uh, they did change the, the, uh, the Lord's Prayer a little bit, which is still tough for a lot of us. But um, the phrase about God lead us not into temptation, God doesn't lead us into temptation. It's a really bad translation. So Catholic just means all people who believe. That's what that means. Now we have the uh, prayers of the people. Lord, in your mercy. God of the covenant, through and by your church, we draw us into community. We give thanks for your grace that surrounds and fills us as we gather in worship. Inspire all who prepare and lead us. Especially we pray for our musicians who uh, creative gifts adorn our worship. Lord, in your mercy. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international affairs to protect the environment for future generations. Remind us that you have commanded us to be caretakers of the earth and all that lives in it. Lord, in your mercy. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect all and comfort those who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Lord, in your mercy. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support us in our ministries of prayer in the presence of this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Show us the way of compassion and love. Bring healing of mind, body, and spirit to those uh, brothers and sisters. Please join with me. I invite the people to cup their hands here, and in God's hands, we place these people. Are you ready? There's a whole bunch of them. And I'm going to, this is your assignment for this week. Take one of these names and pray for this person every day. Now, don't just pick the first one, you know, because that would be the easy thing to do. But there's a lot of names here. And some of you know these people and who they are and what's going on in their lives. Pray every day. Jennifer Lacey Sally Gary Julian Phyllis Ethan Monica Fritzy Carolyn Eddie Emily Cassius Wes Anna Joanne Kira John Angie Maureen Dennis Manny Jackie Kelly, Megan, Andrea, Eric, Gail, Corrine, Mert, and Darlene. Lord, in your mercy. Okay, I'm going to say those names again so that you can pick one of those out, all right? I'm going to do them backwards this time. Darlene, Mert, Corrine, Angie. Maureen, Dennis, Manny, Jackie, Kelly, Megan, Andrea, Eric, Gail, John, Kira, Joan, Anna, Wes, Cassius, Emily, Eddie, Caroline, Fritzy, Monica, Ethan, Phyllis, Julian, Gary, Lacey, Sally, and Jennifer. Oh God, hear our prayers that we offer up to you both spoken and silent. If, if the ushers would put uh, the prayers in the jar, 
um, and we will lift them up onto the altar. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now will share the peace. Are you the one that, one of you uh, did some cleaning? No. No. Or was that somebody else? Oh, Annalise. Annalise, there it is, okay. Thank you for your gift, both of you. A good piano player is hard to find <laughs> for a church. We now have our, well, I'll just wait. You guys are, there's a bunch in the middle that are really, which is good, you know. You don't want to just shake somebody's hand and then go, and then you forget two seconds later. Uh, let's take our offering. God, with thanksgiving in our hearts, we bring these gifts to you, asking you to receive them and bless them for mission and church. Now prepare our hearts to receive and return the gift you've given the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
the other church I one of the churches I used to work at, they, they always had bread, an actual loaf of bread. Once in a while they'd forget it and then somebody have to run down to the kitchen and get a, a old freezer burned bun. But um, I always had to put the sanitizer on and then I worried, some people said, the first bunch would say, well, it's kind of, it tastes a little alcoholy. But it doesn't matter what the bread looks like or where it comes from. Communion is the place for God and us to come together in a unique way that we don't really come together any other time. I get, I get a ringside seat, so I got the box seat. I got the best seat in the house because I get to see everyone. I wonder what the disciples would have said 2,000 years ago if they said, you know what, this deal you're doing right now, you're sitting around eating with your buddies here, this is going to change the world. It's going to change the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for the redemption of all souls everywhere. Do this in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we celebrate the Lord's death until his return. You may be seated. And we will begin communion here.
The altar reminds me of another place, and that is the kitchen in our houses where everybody gathers, and they want to be in there. Sometimes we'll have people come over to our house, and we don't have, you know, my wife wanted to get a bench for the kitchen, and I said, I don't want a bench in the kitchen. It'll just get in the way. That's where everybody wants to hang out. Sometimes I'll just say, well, I'm just going to sit in the living room by myself. No, everybody wants to be where the table is, where the food's being given. That's what this is. This is a place where we come together and we want to be. It is a place of grace and a place of love. Please join me now as we say together the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. And the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us that we are your beloved children. Send out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord let his face to shine upon you and let the morning bring news of your unfailing love for all. We have put our trust in you. Amen.